At the PGA Championship, Rory McIlroy and Scotty Scheffler both had their drivers tested ahead of the tournament at Quail Hollow, and they were both deemed non-conforming by the USGA, which handles equipment testing for the PGA of America, PGA Tour, everybody else basically in the United States and Mexico. The RNA handles everybody else. So what makes a driver non-conforming, and what happened specifically to Rory and Scotty's drivers that made them, quote-unquote, illegal, even though you're not going to jail for them? Well, we're going to talk about that in this video. I'm Ryan Ballinger with Golf News Net. And there are a lot of rules that determine the conformity of equipment to the rules of golf. There's a, a manual, the USGA and the RNA, the governing bodies of golf produce. It's 100 pages long. It, there's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of graphics and explanations. And there's a lot of things that govern what makes equipment abiding by the rules, right? For drivers, there's a whole ton of set of rules unto themselves about how wide the hitting area can be, how wide the face can be, how much moment of inertia there can be in the vertical axis as opposed to the horizontal axis, how much water that club head can displace. That's the 460 cc's thing. But the most likely thing that comes up in testing of drivers at professional golf tournaments is a thing called characteristic time. And characteristic time is the amount of time that the golf ball spends on the club face at impact. So what the USGA and the RNA have as their equipment rules is this standard known as the coefficient of restitution, which is basically a fancy physics way of saying how much energy is transferred at impact from that energy making moment, which is your golf swing, which has a kinetic energy component to it, right? Kinetic energy is moving energy. And then at impact, it becomes what's called elastic potential energy because it's moving potentially from the thing that's moving, right, your driver, and the kinetic energy that could be transferred in potential is what happens at impact to the golf ball, right? So obviously when you hit it more flush in the face, you have a better chance of transferring more energy because there's less twist and turn. It's built for that efficiency, right? You, you want to hit the center of the club face as best you can, but drivers are better, way better than they used to be at off-center coefficient of restitution. So you get more out of poor hits because of face curvature, better materials, but also face thinness. So what happens in testing, they can't test the coefficient of restitution really easily in the field. There's a maximum limit of 82.2%. So what happens is when you take a golf swing and you make kinetic energy, and then you hit the ball at impact, only 82.2% of the kinetic energy you make can be transferred to the golf ball when you hit it. The tolerance up to 83%. This has been the rule since 1998. No, nothing has ever changed in that regard, at least basically as long as I play golf and as about as long as titanium drivers have been a thing. So that's always been the rule and it's across the face, right? So you can have anywhere on the face, it'd be about 83% with that tolerance. But it can't be more than that anywhere on the face. Otherwise, it fails. And so what happens when we test in the field, the USGA can't figure that out really easily. So they have come up with a notion called characteristic time, which is, again, how long the ball spends in collision with the club head before it you know, flies off, right? So there is a rule about that, and that is what determines whether or not your club is conforming. So the current characteristic time limit from the USGA and the RNA is 239 microseconds. Microseconds. That's millionths of a second. 239 millionths of a second. That's how little time your golf ball is supposed to spend in contact, not only with this driver, but every other club in your bag, by the way, but particularly in this case for your driver. There are 18 microseconds of tolerance, up or down, right? Obviously, up is really what you care about. So for a maximum limit of 257 microseconds, and they test that using a pendulum device. They basically swing a pendulum at it, it looks like a golf ball, and then it hits off of it, and they measure how long it takes for the ball to move away, basically when it hits it. And then that determines whether the driver is conforming or not. And of course, there are all kinds of other rules for things they test, but the thing that happens with modern driver faces 
is they are extremely thin. So what happens when you hit it more and more and more is you kind of thin it out over time. If you've ever used uh, a kind of butcher's hammer, something to pound meat with in terms of tenderizing it, right? You kind of flatten it out. If you're ever kind of making like a chicken fried steak or something like that, you kind of tend to take that steak and you kind of make it flatter by hitting it over and over again until it flattens out. Well, the same thing happens here with a driver face. The more you hit it, the more it flattens out and gets thinner and spreads out ever so slightly. And so that makes it against the rules of golf. Now, does that mean this gives an enormous performance benefit to a player that is using a non-conforming driver? Not really. So in 2019, at the Open Championship, Xander Shoffley's driver was tested at Royal Port Rush, and it was deemed non-conforming. And it was off by literally one microsecond, one millionth of a second. But that made it illegal. So he couldn't use it. But what did that mean performance-wise? Well, almost nothing. In terms of the tolerance, that 18 microseconds we talked about earlier between what you could have legally and what the maximum is, that 257 microseconds number, that equates to about a quarter of a mile per hour of ball speed. And that's about a yard of max. And that's under ideal conditions. So yes, those drivers that McElroy and Scotty Scheffler had before the PGA Championship were non-conforming. And they were taken out of play, and that's what should happen. But it didn't really translate to a performance benefit that made a big deal. And it wouldn't have made a big deal in the competition. Okay, over the course of 72 holes, you had 14 drivers probably per round. You get a yard max, and that's if it was way out of compliance. Really, it's probably less than that. It's probably like a quarter of a yard at most. So over the course of 72 holes, that really didn't mean much of anything to guys like Scheffler and McElroy, who are Walmarting guys hitting it 20, 30, 40, 50 yards past them. So for the people who might be inclined to conspiracy theories and thinking that these two guys were using drivers that were, yes, non-conforming, illegal, whatever term you want to use, and that they were getting some huge performance benefit out of it, that's not the case. They don't get much out of it whatsoever. But rules are rules. And the manufacturers are supposed to do their job and push driver faces the absolute limits of the rules that we have for equipment in the game. And so from time to time with the advanced materials, these drivers will eventually become non-conforming. And then that's when you put a new head into place and you start the process all over and you keep hitting them, keep hitting them, keep hitting them until they are non-conforming. And there should be more equipment testing about this kind of thing for full fields, for PGA Tour events not just samplings at major championships. We need to see more of that. But the performance benefit from having a non-conforming driver isn't so great that it means a whole heck of a lot, given the modern materials and how thin they are in the first place. Hopefully this helps explain things. Hopefully this helps you kind of understand what makes equipment conforming and not, at least in the context of driver impact. There are a whole manual of other things that matter but all of the equipment that is made these days is made to fit USGA and RNA regulations. And the thing that is really most likely to happen that makes something non-conforming is what happens with characteristic time. So rest assured, if you've been hitting your driver for 10 or 12 years, there's a decent chance that you have hit it into non-conforming status at this point, but no one's coming for you. Don't worry about it. Keep using it. Enjoy that extra yard. Have a great time with it. And the meanwhile, the best players in the world, they have to worry about it a whole lot more often than Subscribe for more information. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.